Amen. So he's going to meet you where you're at, okay? I believe that with all of my heart. And I need to tell you this, man. You've come too far to go back now. I don't know who I'm here for this morning, but I just want to encourage you. You have come too far to give up and to go back right now. And I believe that many people... Do I come to your house and just start rearranging the furniture just anytime I want to? Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And on the front row, you know what? We're going to move you all the way to the back. Anyway, so I believe that many times people in the, in, in the days to come, people are going to be sharing their testimonies after this series that Pastor Todd, we did not stop. We decided to keep on moving. We decided to keep on going. And as a result of this, this is what happened in my life. How many of you believe that right now? By faith, by faith, you receive that. Amen. And so I believe that as well. And, and, and uh, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about purpose and about finishing your purpose. And I want to take this out of a New Testament story here in a minute. But we, every uh, series has to have a, a verse that we hinge everything on. And here it is, Hebrews 10, 36. The writer says, you need to persevere. What he's saying is some of you have given up too quickly. I'm already preaching and you don't even know it. Some of you have given up too quickly. You need to persevere so then when you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And once you've been, <coughs> been walking with God a little bit, I'm no longer impressed with people who start. I used to get pretty impressed with people who start, but I'm not so much impressed with people who start. You know who impresses me? People who finish. Anybody can show up at the cell event but there's a few of them that stay around to pay the price and perseverance. And that's who I want to be like. I want to be like those guys that finish their race. And so I want to talk about God's purpose in your life. And I want to encourage you this morning that if God has given you a word, that that word's going to come to pass. Would that be okay if in your life that God just performed the word that he promised? Amen. About six of you want that in your life? How about the rest of you? Anybody? Would it be okay if God just did what he said he was going to do yeah. in your life? Amen. So you can only walk in what you, what you believe. And when somebody gives you a good word, it's not enough just to go, eh, that's good, eh, man. you better shout on that thing and take it home. I'm telling you, man, if I go to Baskin Robbins and I get me two scoops of rainbow sherbet, I wish somebody would try to get a bite of my ice cream. I'm going to let you know. Oh, no, hey, hey, look, there's a, see, see that road, that road, that line right there? That's a line to your happiness. But right here, this is a line to your brokenness. If you stay over here trying to get, and you got to get excited. So when you really want something, you go after it. That's what I'm trying to say. Are you here? And so I want to talk to you about Paul this morning and, and Acts chapter 27. And I don't think that we can always understand the principles behind everything Paul wrote, because I think it's hard to comprehend the brokenness that Paul went through. And I don't think anybody knows what that is. And, and to be able to write to us about the depths and the riches of Christ that he had to experience some personal depths and some personal lows. And I believe this, if you ever see somebody with great spiritual strength, you can always bet that it was born out of some kind of sorrow. It was born out of some kind of brokenness. And in Acts 27, Paul's in trouble. It's Paul, y'all. That's my favorite thing to say. It's Paul, y'all, and Paul is in trouble. He's in transition, and he's in trouble. And by the way, if you're in either one of those this morning, if you're in trouble or if you're in transition, you're in a good place to be because that's where God does his deepest transformation. That's good news. That's where he does his deepest transformation. And so Paul's in trouble. In fact, he's on this boat, and he's headed to Rome. And it would be one thing if you were going to Rome on a boat called Royal Caribbean. I wouldn't be so bad. I, you know, I could dig that, man. It would be another thing. Even if you're on the a Princess Cruise Lines and, and you're going to Rome on the cr Princess Cruise Line and, and, and maybe you're going to check out the, the wineries there and all those things, that'd be awesome to do. But that ain't what Paul's got. Paul's on boat and he's not going to Rome as a visitor. He's going as a prisoner. And, and he's got 275 other prisoners on this boat with him, and they're bound hand and foot, chained together, and probably some very, very barbaric conditions that they're under, okay? And it's not enough that he's headed to Rome as a prisoner on this boat. A storm's going to come up unexpectedly, and, and it just changes everything. So Acts 27.9, he says this, 
Much time has been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the day of atonement. Now, what he's saying is conditions aren't ideal. How many of you recognize that in your life, that conditions aren't exactly what you want them to be? They're not always just perfect and ideal. He says, Paul warned the people on ship. He said, men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous. How encouraging. And bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. And then watch verse 11. But the centurion, that's the guy who's in charge, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and the owner of the boat. I mean, that's the right thing to do, right? I mean, just think about it. This guy is the owner and and he's a boat captain. And and if you're in charge of getting these prisoners safely to where they're supposed to be, and you've got the owner of the ship, who is the pilot of the ship, the captain of the ship, and he's saying, don't worry about it. We can keep going. And then then there's preacher on board. And he says, now, I just want to let you know that I've been praying about this. And the Lord told me. People will put all kinds of craziness behind that slaying right there, won't they? You ever ran into them people? You better watch it. You know what the Lord told me? And I'm like, oh, Lord. You ever know them church people? The next thing, the Lord told me. And I said, can you show me that in the Bible? Well, no, because this is a new revelation. Boy, I'm scared of you. No, that's not new revelation. That's a whole new translation. What what you got... (laughs) Are you feeling me? You ever met those people? You're, you're missing me this morning. And, and, and that's a Christian, Trump, it's a Christian Trump card. And what it means is I can say whatever I want to say next because I said, the Lord said. That's dangerous right there. And he said, the Lord told me we shouldn't go. And it says the guy that had to make the decisions, he's like, okay, so here's my choice. I can listen to the captain of the ship who is also a pilot of the ship who's been to nautical school that has maps that knows exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, when I'm supposed to be doing it, or I can listen to this preacher slash prisoner. Who are you going to go with? I'm going to go with the captain of the ship. It's okay if you talk out loud at this church. You're not going to scare me. People are like, I I don't want to say there's a wrong answer. No, you're going to go with the guy, the, 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 the owner. But because they made that decision not to listen to Paul, Bad things are going to happen because Paul wasn't just on the boat just to be on the boat. He was fulfilling God's purpose. And sometimes God's got you exactly where you're at and you may not understand why you are where you're at, but it has nothing to do with anything you want other than his purpose in your life. Okay, and so God's speaking through Paul to warn these men and they're not listening. And and, and I'll tell you what, this is a metaphor for how in our own lives so often we listen to all the other voices that are out there and everybody else is on the boat. Come on, somebody. They always have an opinion and and we listen to all the, the indicators and we listen to everybody else's idea and we listen to everybody else's opinion and, and we listen to everybody's assessment of the situation before we listen to God's. Isn't that crazy? And so here's a note if you're a note taker like this. Am I going to steer by my sense or am I going to steer by the spirit? Am I going to steer by my sense or by the spirit? And, and every ship is being steered by something. And the ship represents your life. The ship represents the direction you're headed. The ship represents all the things that God has given you. And your life, which you've been uh, entrusted with. By the way, your life is heading in a direction according to what it's being steered by. You are, con- it's nobody, quit blaming everybody else in your life for your faults and your failures. Grow up, own up, and say, you know what? That was my bad. (laughs) It's getting so quiet in here. I'm not saying that. I am not. My wife's been trying to get me to apologize for two weeks. I am not telling her. It occurs to me that a lot of us are like this in Centurion, though. Instead of, what what is that? Instead of listening to what the voice of God says, because a lot of times that doesn't make sense. We're listening to what our senses say because that's something we can understand, our senses. Can I tell you that there is a lot of stuff that God told people to do in the Bible that doesn't make any sense at all? If if you live your life by what makes sense, you will never become a person of strong faith. I'm going to tell you that right now. And and if you you do that, if it always has to make sense for you to obey God, you're never going to know what it means to sell up in the deep waters and be able to trust him. 
It didn't make sense, y'all. It didn't make a bit of sense for Joshua to walk around the walls of Jericho seven times when God could have just spoke a word and the walls, the walls would fall down. It didn't make a bit of sense for Moses to put a staff in the middle of the Red Sea for the Red Sea to spark when God could have just spoke it. It didn't make a bit of sense for Daniel to spend the night in the lion's den talking about God's able to keep me and God's able to protect me with the lions. It didn't make a bit of sense, not one lick of sense for Jesus to hang his body on the cross and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It didn't make a sense. Come on, somebody. It didn't make sense when the stone got rolled away for him to get up and appear to all 120. It didn't make sense for them to go out preaching in his name. It didn't make a bit of sense that when they got persecuted for being apostles, for them to stand up and say, we're going to obey God rather than to obey men. It didn't make sense. Are you living your life by what makes sense? And if you are, you'll never know what it is to have the joy of faith in your life. If you stop every time it doesn't make sense, you'll never know what it's like to walk by faith. Well, Pastor, it's going to cost me something. Uh, for sure. Everything costs you something. People are going to think you're weird. Er. <laughs> People are, aren't going to want to be around you all the time. People are going to shut you down in conversation. You can talk about God all you want to. You start talking about Jesus, no one wants to run with you no more. Think about what I'm saying. Nobody cares when you talk about God. Everybody wants to talk about God because they don't know if you're talking about the God of the grass or the God of the tree or Muhammad. Or You start talking about Jesus, they know exactly who you're talking about. He's the one that will shut all the other conversations down. Y'all not ready for me. Oh, you one of those kind of Christians. Listen, if you're always trying to make sense, you will never walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. I want you to think about those key areas of your life. Are you living according to your senses, what you can calculate? Or are you living according to a sense of confidence in God's promise that he's already done the math and he knows the exact outcome for you? You know what I like to say? I say this all the time. Outcome is God's responsibility. Obedience is mine. Outcome is God's responsibility. Obedience is mine. You don't got to understand to obey. You don't have to know where it's going to end up, to, where it's going to end up for you to take the next step. You just got to obey. So in this passage, we got these guys who keep sailing <laughs> when they should have stopped. Now, this is going to be a disaster because anytime that you ignore God's warning, the winds will always be against you. I want to tell you that. And they went along and they caught a wind. And for a little, you ever had a little wind to your back and you thought it was a good thing and it turned out to be a bad thing? That's what's going to happen right here. These guys, oh, we're making progress, but not all progress is good. I need seven of you to go with me. I said, not all progress is good. Yeah. Verse 13, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and set along the shore of Crete before very long. Now watch this. It doesn't say how long. But ignoring God's warnings, sailing into the wind before long, an unspecified period of time. I want you to pay attention to that because a lot of us think that we have so much time. I'll get it next week. I'll get it next month or I'll do it tomorrow. I'll unspecified amount of time. Are you with me? Eventually, <laughs> what was a progress, what was a good wind turned into hurricane force. What started off and I think it's good, it's good. Whoosh, hurricane force. Caught a northeaster, swept us down from the island, and the ship was caught in the storm and could not, ha uh, could not head out into the wind. So we gave weight to it, weight to it, and we were driven along. I pictured this in my mind. You know, they had the wind in their backs, and sometimes when you ignore God's warning, it feels, I say this again, it feels like you're making progress. But even the progress that you think you're making is ultimately going to lead you into a disaster. For what is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What is it for you to make more money if you got to cut corners to do it and you don't even like yourself when you're shaving in the morning? You don't even like the woman you see when you're putting on your makeup in the day. What good is it for you to amass all kinds of material stuff and, and, and not be involved in the things that, God, that matter most to our God? You're going with the wind, but the wind is against you when you ignore the warnings of God. And I love this phrase because it says, uh, it describes so many of us. It says, he was just driven along. Just, just driven along, just, just going with the flow. 
Verse 16, as we passed uh, uh, the lee of the small island uh, called uh, Calda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard, and then they passed the ropes under the ship itself to hold the ship together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars, the citrus. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be. I wonder how many are here today, and you're just being driven along, and you don't even know what's driving you. You're just being driven along because you ignored the warnings of God. It's getting quiet in this little Presbyterian church. That's cool. (laughs) You know what's interesting? That I could stop right there and I could mention some of the warnings that you've ignored, but I don't have to because that's what the Spirit of God does. Don't you love that? He doesn't threaten you. He doesn't condemn you, but he calls to you with a gentle wind of of, of whisper saying, you need to pay more attention here. You you need to put your heart back into this. You need to get back over here and and finish what you started. You You need to do this thing like you used to do it. And you've lost your passion. You've lost your intensity. Come on. Hey, look, Todd, wake up. You've lost your focus. And no, now I'm being driven along. I've lost my anchor. When you lose your focus, you'll lose your anchor, you'll lose your intensity. And what you used to hold on to, you won't even recognize anymore if you stay out there too long. Can I tell you, this is my third time to preach this message and all three times it's been totally different. Don't you love the Holy Spirit? I love the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, we took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. It's getting bad now. Somebody say it's getting bad. Now, I know this is supposed to be an encouraging message, and and I'm going to get to that. But before I can get to the encouraging part, I need to describe with some accuracy what people's lives look like right now. Because if you can't identify where you're at, there's no way you can get to where you need to be going. You can't have a sense of direction until you first recognize where I'm at and know where your surroundings are and and what's going on. And so they're just throwing stuff off and and they're trying this and they're trying that. They're trying whatever will work. They're seeing if this will work or that will work. And and they're caught up in a storm, all up in the midst of the trouble, all up in the midst of trials, all up in the midst of situation that that many, many of us created those situations ourselves. Many of us created our own circumstances. And we're talking about, God, I can't believe you would leave me or forsake us. I, I told you not to go. I'm over here. This is where I'm at. See, this is where I'm at. Over here. Over here. Like in uh, Three Amigos. Over here. Over here. My God. My God. Y'all never seen that? Y'all mom and dad didn't even love y'all. I'm going to tell you if you ain't seen that movie. Go home. You're going to watch it tonight. You, it'll make you laugh. They're on the wall, and they're trying to, they're, they didn't know how to fuck up. They didn't know how to do a bird call, so the guy's going, over here, over here. Anyway, so. <laughs> but many of those things we created ourselves. It says, on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands, and when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging. Isn't that a terrible thing when the storm keeps raging? Isn't it a terrible thing when, when all you want to do is come up for air and you get up for air only to be hit by the next wave? Only to be right knocked right back down by the undertow? He said, we finally gave hope. We gave up all hope. Somebody say all. all. We gave up all hope of being saved. Now that's a profound statement of not only distress. Distress is one thing. Distress, that's, that's when you're throwing stuff overboard. That's distress. When you're trying anything and everything, you're still trying to do something about trying to save your life. Come on, you, are you here? You're, you're still trying. That's when you're still trying to make a way. That's when you're still trying to decide. He said, eventually, we went from distress to despair. You know what that is? Despair when you say, it's never going to be any different. It's always going to be like this. And I believe some of you have made that conclusion in your life this morning that this is just how it is. I'm I'm always going to be discouraged. Uh, Pastor Todd, this is just how it is. I'm always going to be depressed. Uh, that's just I'm always going to be overweight. This that's just how it is. Uh, I, I'm always gonna struggle with anger. That's just how it is. I, I'm always gonna be a bitter person. Everybody in my family is bitter. Uh-huh. Talk about curses. I ain't got time to tread there. I am always gonna be like this, Pastor Todd. 
This is just how I am. I'm always going to be lonely. Everybody, nobody's ever going to love me. I'm always going to be addicted to this. I can't get free. It's just always going to be how it is. That's how it's going to be. I'm always going to have a negative view of things. It's just how it is. I'm just being driven along. And I have no hope. It's just the way it is. My mom was like this. My dad was like this. Everybody in my family struggles with some kind of addiction or mindset. It's just normal for me to be like this. You know why it's become normal for you to be like that? It's because the the things you can't get victory over, you just decided to learn how to cope. And your dysfunction, you have become dysfunction. Your dysfunction has become functional because you refuse to believe that God can change everything about you. You have, cha- you, you have refused to believe that God can do something about every situation, that every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess that he is Lord. You forgot that part. You've worked that part out of your Bible, but I'm here to tell you that he is who he said he is. Can you say amen this morning? Yeah. He said, we neither saw sun nor stars appeared for many days. He said, it got so dark out there. He said, as long as we could see something to God by, we kept going. And and even though we were taking a beating, we kept going. Even though it got difficult, I, I, I could see a little bit of hope. But even that hope got snatched away. My God. Even that thing got dark enough. Eventually, we had lost what we had been guided by. Isn't it a pitiful thing when you lose your compass? Isn't it a pitiful thing when you forget where true north is? Isn't it a pitiful thing when you can't hear the voice of God anymore? He said, eventually, we lost what we had been guided by. When we lost our light, we gave up on our hope. And now, we're just drifting. We're not living We're just existing. We're not living. We're just waiting for our ticket to get punched. We have given up on all hope. All hope is lost. We will die in this condition. Many of you are here today, and that has become your confession. I'm just going to die in this condition. I wonder who God sent me for this morning who's just drifting. Do you know that God set you up so you could be here this morning? You think you're here by accident. Ah, the devil is a liar. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment because God wants you to leave better than the way you came. And I know you're sitting there thinking, man, that guy and that good looking man up there in that black shirt. You know what I don't understand about this church? I be preaching my face off. Nobody will Amen. I'll say something like that. And everybody wants to laugh. You're always laughing when you shouldn't be laughing. You're never amening when you should be amening. Amen. A bunch of hateful people go to church. I'm just playing. <laughs> Isn't it fun to go to the worship center? Come on, somebody. No place I'd rather be than right here at TWC, except if Jesus comes in, y'all can have this and I'm going to go to heaven. But um, I'm, not the, I'm not married to the idea. I just like it. But I love there. Anybody want to come go with me? Anybody want to get out of their current conditions and come go with me? Anybody believe that it's still going to happen, that no matter where I'm at right now, that God is still who he said he is? It may be dark right now, but I see light somewhere. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Ah! Let me get through this. We're just talking. God, come down. And it said, after they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them. And I want to I wanna stand up like Paul to you and preach a word to all of you who have been driven along that maybe you've lost some time and you've lost some cargo and maybe you've lost some money and maybe you've lost some moments. Maybe you have lost some people. Maybe you have lost some peace. You might have lost some brain cells along the way. I don't really know. I don't know what you lost. You may have lost some things, but here's what the word of the Lord says. Lean into this. It says, Paul stood up before them and he said, man... You should have taken my advice. Now, I know some of you are confused right now because you're wondering, I thought Paul was a man, but he sounded like a woman. (laughs) I think that's Trish's life verse to me. You should have taken my advice. Trish, I'm going to cause you to go into great sleep like Adam. (laughs) 
Y'all need to pray for me. He said, man, you should have taken my advice. What God is saying is this. If you'd have done things my way the first time around, it'd have been better. If you'd have done it my way, you wouldn't have to go through all of this. You wouldn't have to do it. If you'd have listened to God the first time, but here's where it gets good. Huh? Should have listened to me, he said. You would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But thank God that God don't stop there. Look at verse 22. Verse 22 says, but now. Somebody say, but now. now. Eight of you are ready. Somebody say, "But but now. See, I can't do anything about what happened in my past. I can't do anything about the decisions I made when I was 16. I can't even do anything about the decisions I made last week. I can't do nothing about what I did yesterday. But but now there are some things I would change if I could. If if, if I could get a do-over, I'd do it over. But I can't. And because I can't, you know what God gave me? A but now. He gave you a but now. Everybody say but now. now. You know what Paul sounds like here? He sounds like Mary and Martha when Lazarus was dead and Mary and Martha came out to meet Jesus in the road and they said, Lord, if you would have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. But now, even if you'll speak the word, can I tell you we serve a God of right now? We serve that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. I'm preaching better than you, amen. And he said, I can't see the stars. I can't see the end. I can't see the dry ground. But now, Paul said, I forget those things are behind me. And I reach forward to what's ahead. Somebody say, but now. See, we're not putting it off anymore. We're not going to defer our obedience anymore. We're not going to drift along one more day. But now, and my but now is right now. And you're at the right place and at the right time for God to turn you around. Brother Ricky, I feel it. I don't know if you church wells can feel it back there, but I can feel it up here. You got me back there, Brother Ricky? But now, he said, I heard him. I heard him. I got you. He said, I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you. I know it was your mistake. I know it was your bad choice. Hear me. I know you knew better but none of you are going to be lost. Isn't that merciful? See how good our God is? I always hear preachers say things like this. Well, if God got you into it, bless the name of the Lord, he'll get you out of it as well. You ever been to that church and preachers say that? Well, if he got you into it, what if he didn't get me in a situation? What if I got my own stupid self in trouble? What if I got my own stupid self in this situation? You know what he said? I still come looking for you. I still come get you out. I still snatch you out. I still save you. I still give you another chance. I still call your name. I still love you. And here's the best news: the purpose on the inside of you. I will still use your story and get glory out of my situation. Your story is God's glory. Are you hear what I'm telling you? But. Now, some of you needed to hear that this morning. You're on the verge of giving up, but now not one of you will be lost. But this boat, not looking too good for the boat. The boat is not going to make it. Let me ask you a question. Is that good news or bad news? Ah, got one person to answer. Thank you for your help. The rest of you, shame on you. No. I guess it depends on what your priority is in the situation. If what you care about the most is the boat, when the boat goes down, then your hope goes down with it. Paul said, keep your courage, man, because not one of you will be lost. The ship, talk about that later. As for you, see, sometimes our hope is too much in how we want God to do something. Stay with me. Sometimes our hope is in our plan for how we want to get where we think God wants to take us. And if your hope is in your plan, when your plan gets interrupted, then your faith will fail you. And you know you can't trust you. 
You can't trust you. Let's just tell the truth. You can't trust you. You get up in the morning and say, ooh, I can't wait for lunch. I'm going to go get me Mexican food. I can't wait to have me some good Mexican food. I'm going to go get, and here come lunchtime, and you over there eating a Burger King hamburger and some fries. You couldn't even trust you with your own lunch decisions. You got shady before noon. You hear what I'm telling you? You can't trust you. So my hope can't be in my plan. My hope's got to be in my planner. Hmm? See, I thought, you know, yeah, I thought I'd be further along by now. Pastor Todd, they said they'd never walk on out on me. They said it was ride or die, and now I'm here by myself. I thought I was going to get the job, and I didn't get the job. I thought I was going to get the raise only to find out I got laid off. Are you so focused on how you thought that it was going to happen that you're missing the way that God wants to bring in your miracle about? Are you so focused? That's what Paul's trying to get those men to see. He says, we're not going to get there in the boat, which I would prefer. I, look here. Let, let, can, let, can I just be real? I am a fan of the boat. I love the boat. I love me some boat. There's comfort, even if they ain't got no peanuts and even if they ain't got no, I, I love the boat, man. And the boat, we floating. I ain't got to swim. I ain't got to work too hard. All I got to do is just ride in the boat. Big fan of the boat. But no hope for the boat. I should have called this hope floats, huh? <laughs> no hope for the boat. In other words, don't miss this. In other words, some things are never going to be like they were again. Listen to me. Some things are never going to be like they were again. And you're not going to be able to rewind and do that part over. He said, last night, an angel of God, verse 23, to whom I belong and who I'm served, stood beside me. I'm so glad for that phrase. He stood beside me because the Bible teaches that he goes before us and the Bible teaches that he goes behind us. But can I tell you, he's also beside us. He's also beside us. I'm so glad that he's an omnidirectional God. I'm so glad that he's a 360 God. I'm so glad that he's gone into my future and he's prepared it and he's gone in my past and he's redeemed it. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? He's right there beside me in that moment to comfort me and to give me courage. You've got to keep your courage up. The boat might be going down, but keep your courage up. Your bank account might be going down, but keep your courage up. Keep your courage up. Sometimes the only thing you can control is your courage. That's all I got. Everything else has been stripped. And it don't look like much. I don't know how God could get me to shore with what I got left. But you know, the book of Amos says this. If all he can find out of the sheep is two leg bones and a piece of ear, on, I'll restore <laughs> the word. I'll bring that thing back to life. So what you telling me, Todd? I'm telling you this. The world may have got some of you, but it did not get all of you. And if all you got left is a couple of broke bones and some ear, God said that's enough for me to still redeem, to still get glory out of, to still get praise out of. And what the world turned and said was bad and what the world said was worthless, I'll take it around and I'll make him a king. I'll turn it around and I'll make her a queen in the kingdom of God. What everybody else guy gave up on, what everybody else said wasn't going to do, I'll do with that person that everybody else walked away from. Whew. Aren't you glad for his mercy this morning? See, your conditions are not always in your control. You don't always get to decide the weather forecast. You don't get to decide what kind of skies you're going to face. There are some things that are outside of your control, but your courage, that's on me. Who I choose to believe in. What I choose to believe in. That's on me. And some of you have lost your courage. You've lost your confidence and you've lost your hope. You lost your joy. You know why? Can I tell you why? Somebody say why. why? Because your hope was in the boat. Your hope was in the boat. 
Your hope was in your circumstance. So God says, sometimes I got to break your boat up so I can teach you how to let your hope float on the surface without it. <laughs> what you talking, Pastor Todd? Oh, it's about to get good. Verse 24, he said, don't be afraid, Paul. You must, you must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all that sells with you. What are you saying, Todd? I'm telling you to keep your courage, TWC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your courage, single mom. Keep your courage, single dad. Keep your courage. Even though you're divorced now and you feel broke, keep your courage. God has got a plan and a promise. And if they walked out on you, give them gas money to get to where they're going and help them. Give them a map. Give them some directions by God. Get, go down to Best Buy and buy them a GPS. Because the sooner they get to where they need to be, you can be who God called you to be and walk out your purpose. And God let them go. Quit crying over who walked out of your life. That was dead weight. That was dead weight. And if God let them walk, God bless God, get them a Fitbit. Let them count their steps, whatever they need to do. But don't you stand up on the edge of the bed crying out every morning, sitting there going, God, I don't understand. I don't know where you're at. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Your purpose must come to pass. Somebody say, my purpose purpose. must come to pass. pass. You believe that? Give God a good shot of praise right now. (laughs) Keep your courage. He says it twice for emphasis. Keep your courage. (laughs) For I got faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. It'll happen. God's purpose in my life will be fulfilled. He hasn't left me. He's still standing beside me. He still got me. And we're never alive because of the boat to begin with. You don't see nowhere in the Garden of Eden where he's making people, he made them a boat. Because everything they needed, they were in the presence of. On the way home, you're going to go, ah, that was so good. Just tip down your rear view mirror one time. Say, hey, man. Hallelujah. And then put it back up. Put it back. I, I, and the Lord will hear you in the spirit realm. Here, no. Next week, you need to go ahead and say it out loud in front of church. Amen. You need to understand you were never alive because of the boat. You were alive because he breathed. He, he breathed into you. He spoke a word over you. His word is on the inside. Can I prove this point to you? One time Jesus wanted to show the disciples that. So he just went out walking on the water. He he just went walking on the water because he wanted to show them, hey, I'll borrow your boat when I need to, but I don't need your boat because I created this stuff and I'm not subject to anything I created. So everything that's over your head this morning, everything that you feel is undertow, can I tell you, is still under his feet? It is that what you drowning under, he's walking on top of. And if you'll reach up, he'll reach out. Amen. Man, this is fun. I'm having so much fun this morning. I hope you're catching this word. If you'll reach up, he'll reach out. Are you hearing me? Look at your neighbor and say, reach out. Reach out. He said, I don't need your boat. I'm not subject to that. He said, nevertheless, verse 26, we must run aground on some island. And verse 41 That eventually that ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. When it wouldn't move, the stern was broken apart by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escape. Ain't that some messed up? They got to shore because of Paul. Now they want to kill Paul. Watch out for people. They'll use you for what you're worth. And then at the end of the day, they'll cut your throat like you were nothing. Oh, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying, Pastor, how are you just being ugly? No, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Not everybody says I love you, loves you. I'm going to tell you, I already know. Like, nobody loves me like me. I love me some Todd Turnbow. I write my own, I write letters to my own fan club. But you good. I like you. I love you some Todd Turnbow. You you know why? Because I'm God's favorite. I don't love Todd. I love the God that's on the inside of Todd. I love, I love that God took something messy and made it a miracle. I like that God took something that was just a story and got glory out of it. I like that God just took my, my, my number and gave me a name. Are you hearing me today? Says the satyrian, I'm almost done. He wanted to spare, spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. 
and he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first to get to land. The rest were going to get in on planks. Or, watch this, if you couldn't get on a plank, watch this, or other pieces. It might not look like a life preserver. It might not look like something you thought you could float on, but God's going to use what you thought you couldn't get to to get you to shore. Even if he's got to bring you in on broken pieces. Did you see that? God says, I don't need a plank. I don't need a life preserver. If all you can find in the water is a broken toothpick. If all you got the faith for is a broken tooth, if all you got is the the faith the size of a mustard, I can move mountains for you. I don't need a mustard garden. I don't need a mustard tree. If you got a seed, I can bring your promise to pass. Y'all pulling it out on me and you don't even know. Y'all better be glad. I I love you today, man. Pulling out. I didn't even say this in the first two services. This has been totally different from all the other services. I love me some TWC, but I love the Holy Spirit more. Can you say amen? Amen. Are you worshiping the way you want God to do it? Are you worshiping the God who said he would? Trusting him to do it any way he sees fit. He said he provide. He didn't always say how. Come on, man. He said he'd be there for you. But he didn't always promise that you would feel it. Mm. He promised to meet every need, but he didn't say he'd give you everything you wanted. Hey, I came to tell you that it will happen. It might take longer than you wanted to. It might look different than you thought. If God spoke it, see, one thing I hold on to, whatever is happening in my ministry and whatever is happening in my life, whatever is happening in my spirit, whatever is happening to my friends, I hold on to this one thing that I wanted to tell you and that I'm going to get out of here and get out of your way and you can go to lunch. That the scripture says that he that has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete that thing. You see, all I need him is to start it. If he'll just start it on me, I know he'll finish it. Can you say amen? amen? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that God finishes what he starts. And some of you just need to remember today that God is the one that started you on this journey. And if God started it, he's going to finish it. Amen. Paul said, God's the one who started this. God's the one who let me get on the ship. God's the one who let me get in these chains. He said, I always wanted to go to Rome. I just didn't know I was going on Gilligan's boat. (laughs) I just didn't know the minnow was going to get lost. If God put me on this ship, if I got to float in on pieces, if I got to grab for boards, if I got to teach myself to swim, I will survive. You're not hearing me. If I don't know how to swim, Pastor Todd, what if you don't know how to swim? I'm glad if you don't know how to swim this morning and you worried about the boat being busted up. I'm glad that you don't know how to swim. You know why? Because I read somewhere. It's in a good book called the Bible. I read in there where it says, if you feel for me like a blind man in the dark, I'll let you find me. In other words, you may not know how to pray. You may have not been to the Bible University. You may not have the scholastic scholarship that you need to have. But if you'll search for me... Like a blind man in the dark, I'll make sure that you get what you need. I'll bring you in on pieces. I'll bring you in on leftovers. That's what God's saying. I'll bring you. People think that's just waste wood. Just let that float in the water. That's just, that's just trash. God says, I'm a redeemer of trash. I'm a redeemer of broken things. What you throwing away, God says, I take them and I'll make them preachers. How you know, Pastor Todd? Because that's my testimony, baby. That's my testimony. I was doped up, wasn't scoped up, and God turned me around, took me from Bud Light to I saw the light, and I stand here before you today because it's all about his grace. I know every day that I get up that when my heart beats, it's because he allowed it. When my lungs expand, it's because he allowed it. And when he gives me the authority and the privilege of preaching this all awesome word of God, it's because he has a purpose behind my pain. And in the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. It's a privilege. I'm alive because it's a privilege. He's the one that sustains me. And at any time, he could just say. 
You hear what I'm telling you today? Are y'all still here? Last week, I told you to just keep on marching, remember? Take one more lap. I said, keep on marching. Don't quit. Keep on marching. Can I tell you today, I came with the spirit of Nemo. And I came to tell you just to keep on swimming. Just to keep on swimming. Just keep on. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Just, just keep on swimming. And there was I come out like a mermaid. And go back. And just keep on going. Get your dolphin kick on. Whatever you got to do. But you make it. Don't give up. You got to make this thing. God's got a purpose on the inside of you. You've come too far to walk away now. You've got too much time invested in this now. Don't you walk away before the sun shines again. Don't you walk away. Don't you walk away in a dark period. It was never God's plan for you to end in a dark period. I'm through with that. Let me teach you one thing I'm not. How do you know that, PT? Go back to the garden. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then it was evening, and then it was morning, and that was the end of the first day. And then the second day, he does some more stuff, and then it was evening, and then it was morning, and that was the end of the second day. Every day, it was evening, and then it was morning, and then that was the end. God, your father, God, your creator, started out in a dark time. How do you know? Because he spoke in the darkness, let there be light. But can I tell you, all throughout creation, six is your number. Seven is God's number of completion. Can I tell you that it started, it was evening and then it was morning. Your God started out in a dark period, but it couldn't be over until the sun came back up again. That's in creation. I ain't making that stuff up. That's Bible. When you know your Bible, you can go around like, come on, I wish the devil would. Because it may be dark time right now, but daylight's coming. And you know what he said after that? And then he made man, he said, and it was good. It was good. There's purpose on the inside of you, despite what's happened to you, despite what's been done to you, despite what you got yourself into. God still looks at you as good. Because when God looks at you, he still sees the purpose he created you for. You're the only one that's missing that this morning. We serve a but now God. Somebody say but now. You're here this morning. You're discouraged. You may be a little depressed. You may be from distress to despair. Despair. Thank God you got to church today so that you could leave here knowing, Yvonne, that it's a but now. Ah! But now. Devil should have killed you before you got to church. You should have killed me back in my heyday. But you've given me a divine appointment to be here today. And I'm going to leave here better than the way I came. And I'm going to let the restore of dreams begin to restore mine this morning. I need my altar worker.